Hello everyone, we're going to do a new ink today, a new ink that I received at Christmas time, so a couple months ago. And um, also, I'm going to talk a bit, about, uh, a bit about pen ink pairings, combinations, what goes well together. <laughs> kind of like wine and food. Sometimes ink in a pen is, is like that. And the ink in question is Monte Verde's Fire Opal. Um, what can I say about Monte Verde? It's one of those inks that I, I'm... I don't like the packaging. I, I, I've said that before about their inks. I'm not a big fan of their packaging. Um, they, the, the bottle comes in a plastic box. There's a uh, plastic seal. So that's all disposable, not really re uh, recyclable. The other problem is I actually had a huge problem just trying to open this little bottle. <laughs> it has a steel cap. And um, it was like I was trying to open a jar of pickles. <laughs> it was really on there. I eventually got it open. I didn't spill anything, didn't break the bottle. At one point, I was thinking this is going to shatter if I keep doing twisting it like this. But it did come off. So, you know, Monte Verde... When you walk into a stationary store and you're looking at the inks, there's so many beautiful packages, so many beautiful bottles. Sadly, they don't do themselves any favors. That's all I'm going to say about that. But I'm going to do uh, an ink sample. Uh, I'm going to write, do a writing sample with the, this, paper, this ink. And I put it in my Lamy, 2000, my Lamy Studio. It has a medium nib. And I got to be honest, I was really quite impressed with this ink. Um... I was expecting it to be hard to read, and maybe in some pens it might be, but with a medium nib, it really showed up nicely. Um, it was darker than I was expecting. Um, it's part of their uh, gemstone collection, and there's a couple things about the ink. If you look on the side, it says ink with ITF, and then I'm thinking, what's ITF? Well, ink treatment formula. I don't know what that is. And it, it improves the flow of the ink, extends cap-off time, lubricates feeding systems, and improves ink drying time. Uh, our inks are available in a variety of colors. Please visit our website for more information, moniveritypens.com. So that's part of the gemstone collection. Um, let's open this up and take a look at it. I'm going to do a little swatch on this for my records. And I'm going to use different papers for a writing sample. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Anyway, actually, that's pretty accurate. The color of that right now. The light in here is good today. Um, so that's a very pretty color. And sometimes yellow. Well, actually, all the times I have trouble with certain yellows. I have trouble with certain light oranges in reading them, uh, personally. They just dazzle my eye too much. But I wrote with this quite a bit yesterday in my journal, and there was some nice line um, shading going on. There was, uh, you know, some dark areas, some light areas on the down, like dark areas on the downstrokes. And it looked really nice, and it was dark enough and it was attractive enough, and it kind of reminded me a bit of several other inks I had, but it was different enough. It reminded me a bit of Ginger Chicken by uh, Dominant Industries, but it was quite different um, from that. And so, let's do some ink writing. So I have different papers. I've been working uh, through this little selection here, and actually it's, actually it's really good because I have two orange colors that I had recently done. So it's going to be nice to compare that. And I'm just going to do a swatch on all these papers. I'm not going to measure drying times, but you'll get a nice... Com uh, you will be able to see how it compares to similar inks. <laughs> and I didn't actually intend to do that, but it just works out that way. And these are mostly fountain pen friendly papers, and one of them isn't. <laughs> and I'm 
But I have to be honest, I really like this color. It's a good color. And I like, like it more than I thought I would. Hmm. Now, if they could put the bottle, the ink in a better bottle, with a nicer label, and maybe get rid of the plastic and use cardboard instead, and I think they would be doing... Uh, no, for all I know, they're probably a very popular ink. It's just my own personal taste. So the pen in question. It's my Lamy Studio with a medium nib. I love this pen. Um, you know, a sort of a silvery matte material, metal. Works well with all inks, but I quite liked it with the Monte Verde. And medium nib, I, I think, would... Me, this ink, I think, would be best with a medium or a broad ink, right? Hmm. So, quickly looking around, it, it's still wet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how long this has been running, but it's still wet. Okay. And this is uh, Rhodia. Love Rhodia paper. Very smooth, very nice. Uh, we're going to flip this over after we're done and take a look at the back, see how everything goes. This is a staple matte paper. It's This is a staple matte photo paper. It's not at all sold as fountain pen friendly, okay? But I had printed a card on the back, and I just wanted to see how this be paper behaves, you know? And as you can see, it sucks up the ink, doesn't it? <laughs> This is a paper that comes in a pad. It's called G. Lalo Paris. There's a bit of a texture to this page, this paper, and it has a weave. But actually, that moved a lot. That moved across that paper very nicely, um, and it looks good too. So. This is Lystrom 1917, my go-to journal in many ways. Um, it has dried. It, it's still wet on several of the other papers, actually. So it has dried already. It's, I have Pelican, I have Clairefontaine, um, Endless, uh, well, Timo River, it's still wet on. So this is dried already. So Ly Lystrom, it dries fairly quickly. Um, it'd be interesting to see if it goes, if it, bleeds through though, you know? <laughs> and I'm seeing a lot of nice shading going on. Some on the upper strokes it's lighter, on the down strokes it's darker. Looks really nice. And it's easy enough to read. Like uh, it's not so light that it's hard to read. <clears throat> this is the Tomo River paper. It's still wet. Whereas on the Lystrom, it's dry. Hmm. And I don't know, as you can see there, it is still quite wet. Hmm. That's interesting. To me, anyway. Don't know. Hmm. And it's very nice on that paper, too. I'm not getting well. Yeah, I am. At first, I wasn't. I was thinking it was behaving a little differently from a Lystrom, and to some extent, it has. I'm getting more. Sh um, I'm getting more line variation on the Lystrom than I am on the Endless Recorder. This is Pelican. It's still wet. I got this at the Pelican Hub in 2022.
very smooth paper. Um, and I like how it actually looks darker on the Pelican, but the, but the Pelican is a brighter white, so yeah. The uh, other, the Lamy, the Lystrom and the uh, Tomo River paper have a cream color to it. It is still wet on Claire Fontaine. Interesting. And it doesn't seem to flow as nicely across it. That's just the Claire Fontaine. Seems to be more drag. That could just be my imagination. Hmm. This is Baron Fig. I use this for drawing. I don't know if it's just sold as being um, fountain pen friendly, but I like it for drawing, and I do draw with fountain pens on this paper. Uh, I'm writing mud. Seems to suck into the paper more. And, and s slight feathering, maybe? Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. There is definitely a bit of feathering going on with the barren fig. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the paper over. And actually, you know what? It's still wet. Um, it's still wet on, uh, on the Tomo River paper and the pelican. Hmm. I mean, it's still kind of damp on the Clairefontaine. Interesting. Okay, uh, let's look at the back. Barren fig. Actually, you know what? On this barren fig paper, almost all the other colors that I have tested have gone through. This has gone through a little bit, but not that much. You can, you can really see it soaking through. Of course, you're getting uh, ghosting on the back. You can see the writing because it's a thin paper, but, uh, but it's not bleeding through as much as the others. California green really came through, and that's another Monte Verde. So... Claire Fontaine, let's see what happens. Didn't come through. You're getting, when you look at the page, you can't see anything coming through. A couple other colors came through, but that, but it didn't come through on that. This is the Pelican, didn't really come through. And you really don't see much ghosting. It's very thick notepad paper. Tomo River paper, um, one of my favorites. And it's the, it's the journal I'm using right now, Endless Recorder with Tomo River paper, 68 grams per square meter. Ah, didn't come through. Actually, Tomo River paper is one of the few papers that nothing really came through on, you know? Of course, you'll see ghosting and all that. It's a very thin paper, but it's such good paper for fountain pens. This is the Lystrom, also a very good paper. And nothing has really come through on the Lystrom. So, especially Mont Monteverde California Green came through a lot of papers, but it didn't on this one, right? So, you can see the wrinkling and all that, but that's held up really well. So, hmm, maybe it's this is the Lalo. Didn't come through. California. Uh, Monteverde California Teal did come through that. That's the only one that came through. Nothing has gone through this. Actually, that actually looks quite attractive. You could write a note with that and have, you know, short happy birthday note or whatever. Or, or uh, whatever. And that would look good. It's a beautiful color. And this is the Rhodia. And it hasn't come through. Nothing's really come through Rhodia uh, either. So that's a very good paper. Well, Ro everybody knows Rhodia's good paper. So Claire Fontaine had a few things come through it. Baron Fig, everything pretty much came through it. 
Nothing came through the Staples papers, but it's actually behaved fairly well on that cheap photo, well, not cheap photo paper, but totally unsized photo paper, pretty much. Of them all, anyway, okay, <clears throat> very interesting. One thing I'm noticing is the color variations that is occurring with this ink. I don't know if you can see it properly. I'm trying to get the shot here. But <laughs> it is, um, if I didn't, if I was just to look at writing samples, I would just, I would actually think in some cases there were different inks across that, that spectrum. Um, and that also has to do with the fact that some papers are cream and some papers are white, some papers are bright white. Um, but for instance, Rhodia and Pelican, quite a difference, it, much darker. And that's actually paper that's very similar in color, white, uh, white, right? Um, you could say the G. Lalo. Um, for instance, the G. Lalo and the Pelican are very similar, whereas Rhodia is quite a bit lighter. Very interesting. I like, I, I'm finding that interesting. I don't know about you. Well, anyway. Hmm. But I like, anyway. I was using this paper last, ink, this ink last night in my sketchbook, in my notebook, my journal, with um, Tomo River paper. And I really liked it. I thought it was a very attractive ink. It was well behaved, easy to read for the color, and some really nice um, shading and, and line variation, color color variation in the lines. So I very much like it. Once again, I keep going on about it. Do something about your packaging. Get rid of the non-recyclable materials. Change the cap. <laughs> you know, uh, literally, um, it, it's, it was stuck on there very hard and it's hard to get a grip. It's a small cap. Um, you really got to hold on to it and give it a yank. And I really was thinking I was going to crack the bottle, <laughs> but otherwise it was a great ink. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Me rambling on as usual. I'm having fun doing this. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Anyway, have a great day. Bye-bye.